Hi, man. With E-Trailer, if you're trying to carry those really heavy e-bikes from point A to point B, and you want to make really loading them and unloading them a lot simpler, then the Yakima OnRamp LX bike rack is going to be a great choice for you. Today, we're going to have this on the 2023 Subaru Outback Wagon. So let's check it out. So right now, we're already getting a pretty good fit on this. We have plenty of space to sit behind our vehicle. Even if you're on those really bumpy roads, we're not even coming close to really making contact with our vehicle. And even when I shake this, this feels really sturdy. And that's great because we need to be able to hold those e-bikes into place. And this is going to be able to carry those bikes all the way up to 80 pounds. So that's going to be a pretty heavy bike back here. We're going to have the capacity to hold two bikes. So let's actually check out that tilt away feature. Now, I'm not super jazzed about this tilt away feature we have because it is a little awkward. We didn't have a warning label to use two people for this, but you can definitely still do it one. Just bear in mind, if you have two people, it's gonna be easier. And if this is loaded with those heavy e-bikes, I do recommend that. After when I pull that first pin, which is a little bit awkward, that's gonna be on your passenger side. I recommend going to another point where you feel like you have a little bit more leverage to really tilt this back. This one, you're just gonna pull on it and then it's gonna tilt away. That's actually a pretty good tilt away for something that can carry bikes so heavy, which is nice because now we can open up our hatch. And a reason why you might wanna open up your hatch is maybe if you're going grocery shopping, your bike's still back here. You're going to want access to that, or if you want to get ready for your ride. If you want to grab your helmet or sit down, tie your shoes, you're going to have that ability to now. And when you close this up, we can put this back into the seated position. And really, all you have to do is going to be two steps. That's going to be lifting this back into place. Again, you might need two people. It'll click back into that first, uh, really first bolt or pin. Then we'll just grab this cord with our second pin and push it in. You might have to wiggle it a bit though for the cinch down. Now we can take a closer look at this by unloading our bike, but to do that, I wanna use the ramp because it's in the name and you probably wanna check it out too. And so we're gonna come over here. You'll notice we have this knob. I'll just take this off. So I have access to the ramp now. And that's cool because a lot of carriers that have ramps actually don't have them integrated into the carrier. So what you actually have to do is store it inside your car. So sometimes you can lose it. But with this off, I'm gonna take off another knob. And that's where this one gets a little weird because this actually comes in two parts. It's gonna separate and we're gonna reconnect everything just like this. Be a little weird trying to get your hands on both of these and hold it down. You'll use both your knobs to attach to the bottom of this just to make it a little bit more sturdy. And the way we want to attach this to our, via or our carrier is we're going to have these little notches cut out. And we're going to put these tabs in those notches. And this going to be Kind of difficult sometimes, especially if our tire is getting in our way. But if you just kind of press up some, you should be able to get it in there. What's nice about this is you can do this on either side, so you're not going to be limited to either your passenger or driver's side, just in case you're in a parking spot that's uh, being blocked from the other side. But now to show you how all this works, I'm going to remove my bike. I like to start with the straps. We even have a spot to tuck it away, which is especially nice because if that's in front of you when you're trying to load up a bike, that can be kind of a pain, honestly. I'll do the same thing with this backside. Again, just tuck it away, make a life a lot easier. And then we'll come up here, and this is where we're getting a lot of our solid grip from. We're gonna have this tab or push in, remove this strap and since we're making frame contact I don't really recommend this with any carriers or bikes uh, that are made out of carbon or 
that have a really nice paint job. And that's one because you probably don't want to scratch up that paint. And from here, I'm just going to roll this off. And that's the nice thing about this because our vehicle today isn't too high. So that makes using this ramp pretty easy because it's not at a really extreme elevation. And now I can take out this bike, go right, right wherever I want. But we can see how we can remove this ramp. And all you have to do is just kind of the reverse steps. And you're probably thinking this is kind of a, few, uh, a, lot, of, a lot of steps just to use a ramp. And I would agree with you because we're taking this out and I'm having to remove two knobs and then put everything back together, which might not seem like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but compared to some other options, this is a little bit more of a hassle than I'd like. Now, even right now, trying to get everything lined up, I'm not super crazy about. We just have to make sure we put one knob back and put this back on the carrier. And here's another issue I find. We're getting some errors here, just some stuff in the way. That's just because how I tighten this down, just loosen this up a bit. You can actually slide this a bit, so that's not in your way. Get a better look at that. And I've slid that around. Try this one more time. Put it on. But yeah, like I was saying, the Hollywood Racks Destination E bike rack is really nice because it's ramp, super simple to use. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. If I can get this knob back on. And with that back on, I'll grab that other ramp. So we have a little bit more of an idea what I'm talking about. This ramp, super easy to use. Just loosen the back, slide it out, tighten it back down, and then I'll attach it to the back of the carrier. When I'm done, loosen it up, tighten, and then it's ready to be stored back in our vehicle. And that's the downside with that ramp though. It's not gonna come integrated on the carrier. Now I'm gonna actually fold everything back up just so we have a more of a clean look on the back of our vehicle because we don't need this mass sticking up. All you have to do is pull this pin on the side, push down, it'll lock back into place. And actually, I do like this design because of some other carriers, how you have to put their mass down. You're pulling a lot of pins. This is simple, just one, and it cinches back down. But I'd like to get a few measurements to see what we're dealing with. So the first one I'm gonna get is gonna be a ground clearance. I'm gonna go from this knob back here. That's gonna be about 18 inches, which is actually pretty good for this vehicle. And that's gonna be due to this rise in our shank or our carrier itself. So we're not gonna be likely to make contact with the ground. Next up, I wanna get the total distance that sticks out. That's gonna be about 29 inches. Not terrible. It's something to think about if you're in those really tight spots like a parking spot or garage. Now you can save some space. All you have to do is come over here to the front side and you gotta deal with these pins again. But this time is a bit easier because we don't have to really fight with any bikes now. Now I'll cinch back into place. Just make sure it grabs on with that first pin. Put that second pin back down. So it's extra strong. And now we can get a few measurements this way. The first measurement I'm gonna get is gonna be how close it sits. And that's actually gonna be with these arms. You can adjust these, but for right now, we're kind of getting about three inches there. And these poles actually sit pretty far back. So like I said earlier, this is pretty sturdy and I don't see, see being likely you making contact with your vehicle. But the total distance it sticks out, if I go back from these knobs, that's gonna be a little bit over 11 inches. So that's gonna save you a ton of space in the long run. As for how it's interacting on the back of the Outback, it's gonna block a few things. It's gonna block pretty much a majority of our license plate. So that's something to think about. And your backup camera is gonna be mostly blocked too. So I'd recommend sticking to your back window because that's not gonna be blocked. 
or your mirrors. And taillights should be fine too. And the way this is going to install into our vehicle today, we're going to have a 2 inch shank. And that's going to go into a 2 inch hitch receiver. And then we're going to have an anti rattle bolt that goes through and connects to a lock core. That lock core is just going to give us a little bit more security so no one can take our rack. And the anti rattle is actually doing a lot for us because if I shake this, this isn't moving any. And that's going to be something you want from a rack so it's not rattling around, so it's not damaging your vehicle or your hitch. But in my opinion, I think this is a really good option if you are looking for that ability to carry those really heavy e-bikes and you want to make loading them simpler and you don't want to lose your ramp. Now, if you keep pretty good track of your ramp and you don't mind that you have to store your ramp inside your vehicle because at the end of the day, it doesn't take up a lot of space, then I would recommend that Hollywood Racks Destination e-bike rack. But actually like really handling our rack, I actually prefer this one because putting that center mass down is pretty simple. And I really do like the look of this on the back of our car. And really then it's just gonna to come to what aesthetic you like more. And that's just a look at some of the features of the Yakima OnRamp LX bike rack on the back of our 2023 Subaru Outback Wagon. I'm Matt, thanks for watching.